Hey, it's me, your cousin, Don. My name is Sherry McKay. <laughs> Hello, or yes, it. Um, I'm Jacob Billy. Uh, yeah, my name is Andrew Bird. Well, I'm Raquel Canones. Hi, my name is Nelson Mayer, and uh, I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba. So I just think that Rez humor is like, only we get it, basically. <laughs> okay, it's a well. My name is, uh, my government slave name is Trevor Prairie Chicken. My real name is Kitoki. That's the Prairie Chicken. I said, how many people from Six and God? The whole place blew up, right? They're just cheering at this. You know, kind of over masked everybody else's cheers. And they were so happy celebrating. I said, ah, I was wondering why I was smelling things and blowing. <laughs> I am an indigenous female comedian. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. The joke's on you. This is 2020. It is the end of March. It is March 29th. And there's a lot of things happening in the world right now. And although by the time you see this, I don't know when I will be. We're Indians, we're native, we're Aboriginal. We're, like we, like there's 15 of us in one house. 20 sometimes, eh? Like how do you social distance that? When there's eight of us in one car, right? We see each other, we give each other, like we're giving each other hickeys, sucking on greasy necks, you know? <laughs> um, I actually did never wanted to be on YouTube because uh, I have a media degree, so I have a bachelor's, or I, I guess I have a double major. Um, and so but with that, my teacher, he like forced me to get a YouTube, like take yourself more serious and like start filming. So I did. And I was like, oh my God, it was so uncomfortable because <laughs> I was like, I only did that because like, I thought it was funny. Like I just like watch my own videos later on and like laugh at it. Like I just thought it was funny, but like, I never thought that people would like any of that stuff. I just did it because I needed an outlet to like talk shit on basically. <laughs> so I've always had this, this, this little passion of entertaining people. I've always wanted to present that element of escape. Because there's so many problems in everyday, like everyday life, and some days are worse than others. And sometimes we just need a little bit of an escape to get out of that that mindset, so that we can focus back on the good things. A girl bringing her boyfriend to the res for the first time. It's all good. Let's just go. So is this your your auntie's house? You just trying to shack up with my niece or what? No, no. Baby, is that a, a moose? Just butchered it. Oh, oh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, may I use your washroom, please? Sure, of course. You see that tree outside? Uh, I think I'll just hold it. Are you gonna hold what in front of my granddaughter? On the res. They canceled the NBA season? What am I gonna watch now, Grandma? Your kids! <laughs> I just heard on the radio that people are avoiding handshakes because of COVID-19. Good thing natives just nod their heads at each other. So uh, I have a YouTube channel making uh, America's Funniest Home Videos, but native version, you know, or... <laughs> you know, ridiculousness, native version. And uh, with each episode that we make, I try to uh, make it so that we can show our Native American people in a good way and also try to teach, teach them something with each episode rather than just grabbing random videos and then, oh, that's funny, but, you know, to also have an educational uh, um, feeling behind it as well. People gave me enough. They, they took a chance on me. And I don't know why, but they did. It was actually uh, my brother that just recently passed away, Jason Goodstriker. That, uh, he was the one that got me into um, emceeing powwows. And, and anybody that kn knows powwows, to, to be up there to emcee, it's, it's, it's uh, pretty nerve-wracking. And then Jason, he was the one that um, um, told me the importance of studying the different dances um, where, where they originate from and to be able to to um, uh, when there's downtime to have long jokes medium jokes and short jokes you know I had this brand new camera and this brand new laptop and I had all of this knowledge that I thought I had and I wanted to major in media production I felt that I needed to keep 
doing something in that realm. So I started doing YouTube videos. I had less than a thousand followers and I was being recognized here in my city. And, but then one day I just decided, oh, I'd like to try one of these TikTok videos and upload it to my YouTube channel. And I did that and then I closed the app and I deleted it. And then I went back three months later and my daughter was like, people are using your sound and you have like followers on there. So then I thought, hey, you know, like I didn't really plan on doing anything with TikTok except for making a couple videos for YouTube. I tried to indigenize TikTok. <laughs> but I love it. You know, it's funny what you're quoting right there. That's the first thing I think of. My 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 cousins and I do that all the time from Smoke Signals, the uh, the news reporter there uh, doing the weather report. And he talks about, hola, that uh, cloud up there. Looks like that uh, waitress from the Log Tavern. <laughs> hola, that looked like her. I like that cracks me up every time. Anybody here know what APTN is? Yeah. 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 You guys are full of shit. You just want to prove me wrong. That's all I'm saying. That's cool. Yes, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's the Aboriginal People's Television Network. I was thought that was weird. Like, who would make a TV network for people that don't pay their cable bill? <laughs> people know what that is though. I'm from Winnipeg and I live in a primarily white neighborhood and whenever I tell my neighbors that I'm on APTN, they think it's some kind of diabetes medication. <laughs> As a kid, I didn't want to be a comedian. I was shy, right? Like all, a lot of us Aboriginals, we're shy people when, you know, unless you're behind closed we won't shut up, right? But uh, like everybody else, I was shy. There's no way I would have thought I'd ever end up on stage telling jokes. Not a chance, eh? And uh, I noticed that a lot of the people I worked with in social in social work and child welfare, we had rather dark, twisted sense of humor. And again, it was just kind of a coping mechanism, right? The reason I mention that is because the first thing my mother says when I got here, she runs up to me and says, Oh, is Don Bernstein performing tonight? I said, No, Mom, just your son. And the look of disappointment <laughs> on her face. It's like I brought home my report card again. <laughs> Take your vitamins, I don't want you to get sick. How do vitamins stop me from getting sick? It helps you build your immune system and your antibodies. Oh, do you take like lots and lots of vitamins? No, just one a day. Why? Because you have the biggest antibody I've ever seen. Give me those. We joke about some messed up stuff sometimes, right? Like, and it's yeah. a way for us to cope and it's a way for us to heal from those traumas like we we joke about poverty you know things we do when we're poor and we can't have the other things that people who have money have like for instance a door you know <laughs> stuff like that right yeah and, yeah uh, we joke about those things the blanket for the door or the butter knife for the lock or the the wrench to turn the stove on or you know all kinds of things like that we joke about that whereas people regular <laughs> regular uh non-indigenous people who may never even had to experience those things or they have but it's such a traumatizing thing that they don't joke about it so i feel like our humor is definitely a little bit different i don't want to say it's darker but we heal from it definitely And your total is 2020. Ma'am? 2020. Moistly, 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 moistly. Ma'am? Moist. Oh, I'm sorry, what? Your total, it was 2020. So this is hard for me to describe to non-Indigenous people, right? And and how a non-Indigenous people see as doctors, how they think they should act in an interaction with patients. Yeah. It's very different than the way that I see because, of, uh, because I see humor and relationship are so closely connected. And the fundamental aspects of, of how humor can help with that relationship is what I try to share with my colleagues. Um, the idea of professionalism is kind of different in in the Western world and in the uh, in the, uh, the the dominant society and in in in, in the doctor world. Um, but there's room for change, which we're pushing for change. Once we get to know somebody, like 
when, when we joke around with them, we could become brothers or brother and sister and, and, um, and then easily could get adopted into families and, and just by that, just by that humor, non-indigenous people, sometimes they don't understand our humor. They think it's pretty sick. Okay. And especially if we, if, if we tease you, that means we like you. Okay? And, um, but if we don't tease you, then that means we don't like you and that, um, Maybe you should walk away. <laughs> but it's just how we are. You can go to any reserve, and, and, and that's how we are, eh? Your, your nickname would be Moose Lips, you know? <laughs> but, you know, they'll give you nicknames, right? You know? And they're teasing. It's, it's a rite of passage. It's a form of affection. It's a form of, of, of acceptance, you know? My brothers teased me relentless, and they still do. And I'm the youngest of ten boys. You know, and I'm I'm Don Bernstick, the the celebrity guy. But when I go home, when I go to a family gathering, I'm just Don Bernstick's little brother. And they always, you know, put me in place by teasing or bringing something funny up that I did when I was younger. You know, and that's the, to, for us. That's a that's a rite of passage. That's kind of how we kind of put each other in place like that. You know, it's a hierarchy system, and we use humor to do that. And and our people do it all the time. And, and you even see with our elders. Our elders tease each other all the time. So the, the humor is so immersed within their culture. Our ceremonies, our, our, our family gatherings, you know, it's, it's, it's so immersed in their culture. You know you're a res girl when you think everyone's talking about you. <laughs> so did you hear about Raquel? <laughs> so since everyone's nosy and gossips and stuff like that, like everyone knows everything about you, okay? Everyone knows who your dad is, who your grandma is, who your auntie is. They know who your siblings are, or your dad, or if your dad's been in jail, or if this family member's been in jail. Like everyone knows everything about you, okay? So you can't hide. You can't hide anything on the res, okay? Everyone knows your business. You know, I've been called a squaw, and then I've been called a moon meow, and it's yeah. like, you know, I... So, um... My grandmother is actually half Swedish, and she taught me how to kind of walk in both worlds and know when to, this is what she said to me, and I said this so many times, but you have to know when to wear pearls and when to wear beads. And I just like wearing beads now. <laughs> the show was in 1997, 1996. Uh, uh, with my first show. So about 25 years I've been doing this, you know. Okay, now you Indians, how long before he moved into your place? One month? Yeah, right away, yeah. Because we don't mess around natives, eh? White people, they'll meet, they'll have a courtship, they'll date, they'll get engaged, they'll get married, and that's it, eh? But that's about three years, eh? Indians? And the first night. I'm moving in. Got his garbage bag, everything. I'm home. <laughs> I like these young native guys, eh? These young native guys, they act all solid. Hey, what's up, hey? Need some moose. They talk to their girlfriend. Need some moose, sweetheart. Why don't you move out of your parents' house and come live with me at my parents' house? <laughs> a month later, trying to kick him out, eh? Get out of here now. What's get out of here? We shouldn't even be together. We're cousins. <laughs> they said, we want you to come to our reserve and to, do, and to do that. What you did up there, come to our community. Come to our tree day. Come to our event. All of a sudden, I just started getting invited to go all over these places. And then I, I needed to work on my craft a little bit. So I, I waited. I went to fast. I went to ceremony. We all have clown societies, right? Like Native, Native people. We all have uh, like backward societies, clown societies. So I really want to take a look at the sacred aspect of Native humor. So I, I went to the elders and I fasted and I, 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 did, I did some ceremony to earn the right to do this. When our people come in there, somebody's grieving, somebody's lost, somebody is hurt, somebody's feeling depressed. Maybe somebody wants to kill themselves. Maybe, maybe somebody, like, there, there, there's all these people, we have these underlying issues. And maybe, maybe I can heal them through it for an hour with laughter. Maybe I can give them some, some inspiration, some hope, you know. Maybe if I tell them my story of struggle with addiction, maybe they'll sober up. Who knows? There's lots of maybes there. But in order to do that stuff, I can't have alcohol there. Because once you put alcohol in a situation, it just clouds everything, especially with our people. Eh? I've done very well with that, with that, uh, that, that guidance that the elders did. I think I would love to see more representation of us on 
uh, on television media and, and in the movies. But I think showing us as the the, the clowns or, or, or you know a, a goofy character on TV that would go a huge way to changing people's perspectives of us because I think we're taking a little too serious right now. People in mainstream society just think, oh well, we're just going to protest and block roads. <laughs> mm. Sure, we're going to do that, but we're going to have some laughs while we're doing it. I know that our ancestors, they didn't take life serious. I, I'm sure they didn't, right? When we come across um, our neighbors, you know, our, our, our people who are, you know, non-Indigenous, how can you say what is good for Indigenous people if you don't understand the language? If there's no understanding there, then it's our responsibility to actually take that on not in a sense to teach them our way, but so that they can have an understanding of who we are as Indigenous people because we have a beautiful way of life, we have a beautiful language, and um, then therefore, why are they bestowing their way of life on us when we have a beautiful way of life which has a lot of humor, right? You know, and, and it, it, it's something that we all need to share in likeness, especially with our young people. And not take life so serious at all, right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want you to laugh with us, not at us. You know, none of this. <laughs> laugh like you're a native man. Laugh Indian. We laugh so good at us guys. <sighs> Tongue comes out. Even the ones with no teeth. <sighs> like, I love that laugh, eh? You know, the shy ones. <laughs> Even the big ones, the big ones, I got no neck, three chins, when they laugh, they do this, eh? <laughs> and then they bounce. Laugh like a, like dangerous, the most dangerous laugh, native woman. Because they hit people. Ha! Ah, what's, get out of here, not even you. You know, that's how native women laugh hard and they hit. So, laugh like that, that's good medicine. あ、<音楽><音楽><音楽>